Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head down to Poland once again for the first time in quite a wee while. Apparently this is my first Polish beer review since November of 2020 and that is far too long because I've always been impressed with the standard of Polish craft beer. So I'm making a commitment now that over the course of 2022 we will make sure we get a hold of some more Polish stuff to review for you here. On the channel. Now the beer that we're going to have a look at today is from a brewery that has featured on the channel twice before, albeit those reviews were filmed back in 2016, so even longer ago than the last Polish one, but uh, this brewery is one of the more recognisable names when it comes to Polish craft beer. So I guess it's quite nice that we return uh, to Poland with, the, with these guys actually, and this beer is from a series that seems to have very, very good write-ups actually, so very curious to see what it has in store for us. So hopefully it's another good beer, hopefully it makes for an interesting review, and as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one then, and I apologise in advance for any bad Polish pronunciations in this video. Polish is probably the most mental language you're going to find in Europe, it looks nothing like it sounds. But uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to go to a little place called Wibsch, which is in uh, the Zhivyets area of Schlask in the south of Poland. It's almost right on the Slovakian border, in fact. And we're going to have a look at another beer from Brother Pinta. So this particular beer comes from their Hazy Discovery series, which seems to be a series of collaboration, New England Hazy IPAs. They've done a lot of different beers in this series. And this one is brewed in collaboration with Hop Revolution, who are a hop research company from Nelson in New Zealand. So we'll speak about them a little bit in the video as well. But uh, yeah, this is the Hazy Discovery Nelson. They're calling it a non-stop dry hopped double IPA. It comes in at 8.3% ABV. And uh, yeah, it is supposed to be pretty nice, this one. Uh, we got this beer here in Sweden as part of the Tilferid Sortiment in early February. I think this one was released on the 10th of February, if memory serves me correctly. But uh, yeah, should be pretty cool. And I believe this is the first beer I've seen from Brother Pinta through uh, System Bolaget here in Sweden. So I hope this is the start of more Polish craft beers starting to make it here to Sweden, actually. I do know a shop in Copenhagen that, the, that has quite a few of them, so I need to go and check that out at some point, actually. But yeah, 8.3% New England Hazy Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA, from Brother Pinta in Wiebsch in the south of Poland. So yeah, let's crack on with this one then and see how we go. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website. I'll also put the link to the... Um, Hop Revolution Farm from New Zealand as well that you can check out. But there's the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brother Painter in the past and hopefully we can add some more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefect or whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for the Polish beers I've reviewed for you and like I said I need to get more beers on that list over the next little while so that is my commitment for 2022 and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit but Brother Pinta, and again, my apologies for the bad Polish pronunciations. So, uh, Brother Pinta were founded officially in 2011 by Zimowita Falat, uh, Grzyek Zervigina, and Marek Semla. And today they are based in Wipers, which is in the very south of Poland in the district of Zhivyets in Schlask or Silesia, as you might have heard of it. But pretty much right on the border with Slovakia, actually, in the very kind of southwestern part of Poland. Uh, but they started off as a contract gypsy, phantom brewery, whatever you want to call them, and they produced their first beer in time for the Good Beer Festival in Wroclaw back in May of 2011, which was the Grzycki, which I have reviewed on the channel for you before. But they had actually brewed this beer the previous year in 2010 at uh, Grodzka 15 in Pidneshta. Uh, this was a brewery in Lublin, of course, and the success of this beer actually inspired them to think about going properly commercial and founding their own company. But it was uh, Grzycki 
who suggested the name Pint for the brewery, and then this was later changed to Pinta once they got up and running. Uh, but Jimo Vita is the main brewer of the team, and the company brewed at a number of breweries, including Brovarza Nezurza in Javierze, also Schlaski or Schlonsk, and also Brovar Zarsheze, which is near Reshov in southeastern Poland. Uh, but Marek Semla collaborated with Tirgran uh, Vardik, Vardkian, who is an Armenian artist, to produce a lot of the early artwork that you saw on the Brover Pinta beer. So this, ha this occurred until about 2012, and then since then they have had their artwork designed by MH Art Studio in Krakow in the south of Poland, and I believe they rebranded once again in 2019, actually. But in 2015, Pavel Maslowski joined the brewery, and he went on to become the executive director of the brewery. I think he stayed with them up until just early this year. I'm not sure if he is still involved in the company, though. But that year in 2015, they also decided that they were going to build their own brewery in the future, and so the original owners sold 50% of their shares to their friends Cedric Yendai and Tomek uh, Gurgi <laughs> how do we say Tomek uh, Grendish again bad Polish pronunciation so yeah uh, Cedric Yendai and Tomek Gendish came on board and they helped make this happen so a few years later uh, in 2018, they opened their first Pinta pub in Wrocław, and they now also have one in Warsaw as well. But they continued to gypsy brew until 2019 when they opened their own brewery in Wiebsch, which is, uh, I believe it started operating in the July of that year, and then they bottled the first beers and released them in August. So yeah, until August of 20, uh, or until August or July of 2019 these guys were gypsy brewers but as of february 2022 when i'm filming this review for you these guys have produced 310 different kinds of beer and as i said earlier they are one of the most well-known uh, craft breweries in poland actually i think they're one of the biggest by volume as well if memory serves me correctly but uh, yeah, that is all I can tell you about Brother Pinta. And once again, I truly apologise for butchering the Polish language, but it is it's, it has to be. I think I've heard Polish and Hungarian, uh, along with Finnish and Estonian. Those are the two, or the the, 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 the for, yeah Finnish and Estonian are, are Uric languages. And for some reason, Hungarian is as well. But yeah, Polish and Hungarian are the craziest languages in sort of Central Europe. So, uh, yeah, again, I do apologise for that, but I'll, at least I've given the Polish viewers a little bit of a laugh. But, yeah, that is your history of Brother Pinta. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you want to learn a little bit more, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. But as I've told you, if you do get the chance to try some Polish craft beer, I highly recommend that you do because I had some of them back in like 2016, 2015 and they were top class. The Polish craft beer scene is, is pretty damn awesome actually and it's very cheap as well. Uh, I remember being in Warsaw and buying like a round of four uh, half litre Imperial Stouts in the glass and it didn't even cost me 10 sterling actually which was just crazy it really was crazy when we're down there but um, yeah let's get on and have a little look at the beer itself so this one as I mentioned earlier it's an 8.3% New England hazy Imperial Double whatever you want to call it IPA it's hopped with Motueka and Nelson Sobin. We know these hops quite well. Motueka is about 8% alpha acid. It gives you a lovely big oily lime flavour, whereas Nelson Sobin can come in at 16% alpha acid, and it has that big sort of white, green, grapey, um, sort of gooseberry type flavour. So yeah, two beautiful hops. I'm a huge fan of the New Zealand hops. I was in New Zealand back in uh, 2015, and it was, just, uh, it was just awesome. It really was uh, good. The beer scene down there was really nice and it uh, made me fall in love with the New Zealand hops. So uh, yeah, and as I said earlier, this beer is also a collaboration with the Hop Revolution Farm in New Zealand. So I made some notes about them. Um, so Hop Revolution uh, in New Zealand was founded in 2014 by Dr. Susan Wheeler and her husband, Kerry Skiltron. Uh, Susan has a PhD in viticulture from the uh, University of Adelaide in Southern Australia. But this is this field is basically the science behind growing and cultivating grapes uh, but she's also the CEO of Prosecco New Zealand as well which is cool which she runs 
in tandem with uh, Hop Revolution New Zealand. But they were basically encouraged by Terry McCashin, who is a former all-black rugby player turned craft brewer. McCashin's, of course, are one of the biggest by volume producers of craft beer in New Zealand. But Terry McCashin encouraged them to develop their own hop farm, which you can find in the Tapawera Valley in Nelson on the South Island. And it's the biggest uh, single hop farm. I think there's about 116 hectares or something like that. Um, or acres, I forget. So there's 116 of something there, but it's the biggest single hop farm in New Zealand. But apparently it took them five years to get this operation up and running, and they had their first harvest in 2019. But yeah, basically, uh, Hop Revolution New Zealand is a small uh, hop research company, which is pretty cool, actually. They grow a few different uh, varieties there. Of course, they do the uh, the Motueka, the uh, Nelson Sogan, I think Ruwaka and Pacific Sunrise was uh, were two of the other ones that mentioned on the website when I took a little look. So yeah, that is a little bit about Hop Revolution in New Zealand as well. So um, yeah, a little bit of a longer history section on this video to tell you all about the beer. But let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. As you can see, this can is a little bit bigger. This is a half litre can. I believe this beer cost me 50 Swedish kroner. So that is five euros, about four pounds 50 sterling, and I guess somewhere in the region of six dollars American. For those of you watching over there, I have no idea how much uh, that is in Polish Zlotys. I do apologise, but as you can see, it's a very nicely presented can. Black top on it, and it tells you a little bit about the beer on the side here. Welcome to our Hoppy Travel Agency. At this time, along with our friends from Hop Revolution Farm, we're taking you to New Zealand. Motueka and Nelson Sovin Hops are well known for their white grapes and gooseberry and lime character. Uh, and due to our new dry hopping technique, we've also managed to bring peach and kiwi flavours to the table as well. That sounds quite interesting. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. And I guess there's also a, um, a little a Polish craft beer association. There you go. Uh, craft over pivo. Yeah, yeah, Polish for craft beer. So you see that. There we go. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, 8.3% New England IPA. Let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting then. My first Polish New England I could is this my first Polish New England IPA ever? I think it might be actually. So I never thought of that before this video. My first ever Polish New England IPA. That's crazy. That is actually crazy because the last Polish beer I reviewed was um, from Malt Garden, so it was a big uh, sort of pastry sour type thing. So that's interesting, yeah, because when I was reviewing Polish beer before in 2016, it was still the West Coast IPAs. But uh, yeah, anyway, it's really cool. Just there you can see Rober Pinta thing when there you can see a little bit of New Zealand. Beautiful country, actually. It looks very like Scotland. When I was there, I thought this is exactly the same as Scotland, just with different cars and buildings and stuff. It was crazy. But yeah. Anyway, as you can see, we've got the beer out and into the glass, so we can have a proper look at it. So before the head fully disappears, you can see that this beer poured with about a quarter finger of a frothy, perfect white head. I would say that has faded away very quickly, though, just to be a very kind of thin, wispy, foamy layer. But uh, yeah, the beer itself looks very, very nice. So if I shine the light through this one, and this beer is pretty damn opaque, as you can see, um, I would say that this beer has a very bright yellow colour, this one. I would compare it to a mango juice. I always like comparing the appearance of New England IPAs to different fruit juices because that's just what they remind me of. But, um, yeah, this one, uh, remember the colour of your beer depends on, one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any barrel agent that you do or any adjuncts that you put in will also play a role, but when it comes to New England IPAs, you don't really need to care about that. Now, what I will say about this beer as well, though, is that the level of haze in this is pretty damn impressive. I've not come across a beer quite as opaque as this one in quite a while. As you can see, if I put my fingers behind that, it's pretty damn solid. But, um, yeah, the level of haze in this one depends on... Um, Depend the level of haze in these beers, of course, depends on the oak content and the wheat content, and of course the yeast. That can vary. That uh, that sort of makeup, if you like, can vary from brewery to brewery and recipe to recipe. There's not a real rule about how much. Um, there's not a real rule about how much. Um, uh, how much haziness you're going to get out of the beer depending on, on the alcohol content and so on. But yeah, in terms of what you'd expect for a New England IPA, this one is pretty good. Not so much carbonation visible in this one, I have to say. But uh, yeah, in terms of what you'd expect from the style, 
it is pretty much spot on. So I think we can go on and have a little look at the aroma of this beer then and just see how we go. So let's do that then. Nothing unused, untoward, should we say, about the appearance of this beer. Ooh, that does smell really nice actually. It does smell very good. So, pardon me. Mm, a little bit of a sniffy nose there. It was a bit cold outside actually. But yeah, anyway, so first impression of this beer. Um, as I've said to you before, I think there are six different things you need to think about when it comes to New England IPAs. You need to think about the kind of um, the yeasty, farmhousey character of the beer, the rye leaning, grainy side of it, of course. And the rye leaning, grainy side is a little bit more prominent in the American ones. You've got wheaty bitiness, of course, oaty creaminess, the barley malt breadiness, and you can also get a bit of sweetness out of these beers. My first impression of this one is that this really leans toward the kind of more barley malt bready side of things. And again, I'm curious about this because this is my very first Polish New England IPA and the West, the West Coast IPAs and stuff that you got from over there were brilliant, actually. Love the, the West Coast IPAs that you got from Poland. Um, but yeah, first impression of this one is that it's a nice bready the New England IPA. There's a bit of oatiness in there for sure. Um, it's got a lovely little bit of juicy fruitiness and the hoppy character in there is quite nice as well. I will also say it does smell quite fresh and that's something you do have to be aware of in Sweden is that sometimes the beers that are imported into Sistembolaga, they can sit for a bit too long in the warehouse and the importers and Sistembolaga need to work a little bit better on that. But I can say that I think this one is pretty, uh, is pretty fresh actually. So anyway, um, let's go through the aroma of this properly and describe it for you. So, backbone of this beer then, there's a lovely little bit of a soft kind of bread crusty character to it. Lots of nice kind of soft, fresh, fluffy white bread in there. At the back of the nose you do get a wee bit of a kind of wheaty bitiness there, especially when you take the, the aroma in quite deeply. So yeah, pardon me, there's a nice, there's definitely a nice little bit of a uh, yeah, there's a nice wee bit of a kind of uh, bread, yeah, as I say, bread crusty backbone, soft white bread, and then a little bit of wheaty bitiness in the back of the nose. I don't get too much in the way of oatiness out of this in the beginning, but once your nose adjusts to it a little bit, you can smell that lovely, smooth, oaty character. But I don't, I'm curious about this because the oats actually smell quite soft and creamy to an extent, but you're starting to get a wee touch of dryness out of them. And as I've explained in other reviews, when it comes to New England IPAs, the oatiness can be an indicator of how old the beer it is. And when the oats are smooth and creamy, that's when the beer is very fresh, but when it gets a little bit drier, that's when it starts to... Um, that's when it does start to get a little bit more, um, that's when it's starting to get a little bit older actually. But I see on the back it says this beer is best before the 28th of the 12th, 2022. So I'm guessing it's been canned just at the very end of December. So we're drinking this beer when it's about six weeks old, which should be fine because I think you should always leave these. When they're canned, you should leave them for two weeks. And then, you know, these beers are going to stay good in the can for, yeah, like three, four weeks, six, I would say at the most. So we're drinking this beer in quite good time actually. As I said, it does smell good. Um, so yeah, and I've had this one sitting in the fridge for maybe for five, six days, something like that. So bear that in mind too. But um, yeah, aroma wise on the malty side of things, this is quite nice. I'm pretty sure there's a bit of golden promise in here. So on top of the oatiness, you're getting a little bit of that Werther's original kind of thing and a wee touch of a McVitie's digestive biscuit. But uh, yeah, for me, the main component of the, the malty side of this beer is the barley malt. I think it's it's got that nice kind of soft white bready character to it. But uh, yeah, very nice smelling beer from the malty side of things. Let's look at the hoppy side of it. Um, yeah, um, green component is very nice in this one. So as I've explained in other reviews as well, when it comes to New England IPAs, these guys rely mainly on late addition and dry hopping. Um, this one I think smells as if it's almost exclusively dry hopping. Um, but yeah, you get a wee touch of earthiness on the green component there. You get a nice little bit of um you get a nice little bit of kind of floral aromaticity as well but i get quite a bit of grassiness out of this one i think the the green component really leans towards a quite a slightly zesty grassy character and um, but the thing of course with late addition and dry hopping is that doesn't give you a big bitterness and so i find you don't often get quite as deep um green components uh, in new england ipas as you often used to in the old west coast ipas now remember west coast ipas have early addition hopping as well and it's the early addition hopping within the first hour of the wort boil 
that gives you a lot of the bitterness. The late edition hopping is the last half hour. That's a lot more common in uh, New England IPAs and that's why those are less bitter. Dry hopping, of course, gives you no bitterness and it's all about flavour and aroma. So just bear that in mind. Uh, but yeah, West Coasts have early, dry and late, whereas New Englands tend to only have late and, uh, and dry hopping, actually. But yeah, Green Capota, this one, is quite nice. Now, on the aroma, for me, um, I, I actually find the Motu Ekas a little bit difficult to detect. Um, for me, it's a lot of that big, soft, gooseberry, white, green, grapey thing from the Nelson Sobean that really sticks out of this one. Um, yeah, for me, yeah. Big sort of white, green, grapey character to this one. And if you, if you, with the aroma, a little bit later on, that's when you start to get the... Um, that's when you start to get the... Um, the more kind of limey character out of it for sure. You like, but I think that for me, it's the Nelson Sovian that jumps out of the glass at this one. It's that big, soft, white, green, grapey character that's in there. Um, but yeah, this is a lovely, lovely smelling beer actually. It gets a big thumbs up from me on the aroma side of things. But so quite a bready and soft uh, Nelson Sovian New England IPA, this one. So as I always say, take a bit of time and just ponder over the aroma of it before you get stuck in. Uh, but yeah, I think it's about time that we have a taste of this beer then. So um, yeah, this one is the Hazy Discovery Nelson. And of course, there are different ones from all over the place. They've got Hazy Discovery Barcelona, Berlin and so on. And they're done with different breweries. Uh, there was a Copenhagen one with Toil as well. But yeah, this is the Hazy Discovery Nelson. A New England Hazy, whatever you want to call it, Imperial Double IPA from Brover Pinta in Vyprzeg in uh, Zivietz in the south of Poland in collaboration with Hop Revolution from Nelson in New Zealand. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange it, skull, cheers, Nazdrobia. That's very nice. That is very, very nice. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't expect anything less of, uh, of Polish beer. I was very, very impressed with the quality of Polish stuff back in 2016 when I first encountered it. And it's, you know, it's I'm sure it's only gotten better, to be honest with you. The Poles know what they're doing with their craft beer. Yeah. That's absolutely solid. Um, first impression of this one is, it's definitely a little bit more... Um, it's definitely a wee bit more oaty and creamy than the aroma, would have you believe. But uh, what I said about the breadiness being quite prominent in this one, I think, is uh, is true. This is a very nice, very solid and smooth New England IPA. Um, yeah, has everything you'd want from the style. Can't complain at all. Now, as I've said, there's so many New England IPAs on the market these days, it can sometimes be a bit difficult to distinguish, but that is... Pretty damn solid, actually. The main reason that I bought this beer was because it was Polish and I hadn't had anything from Poland in quite a long time. That was the main reason, but I don't regret it at all. Um, so, yeah, this is great. First new, first Polish New England IPA certainly hasn't disappointed. So give me your Polish beer recommendations in the, <clears throat> in the comments section below. I'm sure there's a lot of new breweries that I need to check out. So... Um, Anyway, the on the um, the malty side of things. Then let's start with that. Break the we'll break the flavour down as we always do. So middle third of your palate, then back third of your palate. You can feel that bread crusty backbone there that goes right across middle and back third of your tongue. On top of that, you can feel the the sort of nice fluffy white bread in there, and that's quite. Um, that's actually fairly fairly prominent. It doesn't feel quite as thick and quite as prominent as I thought it was going to be, but it does come out a little bit more the further that you go into the aftertaste. Uh, you can feel that the wheat has a little bit of prominence on the back third of the palate, but we'll come back to that later. This is quite an interesting one, because at 8.3%, I actually find this beer to be quite, on the malty side of things, at least quite light and crisp in a lot of ways, so that's kind of interesting. This actually reminds me of... Um, some of the I, I remember there was a period uh, here in Sweden where quite a few 
of the, the New England IPA brewers were putting a little bit of Pilsner malt in these uh, New England IPAs to give them a bit of crispness. And I do wonder, there's just something about this beer that makes me wonder if there is a little touch of lager malt in this. Because uh, it just, it has a wee bit of that crispness. As I've explained too, when you try beers from different countries, you start to notice things um, about the mouthfeel. For example, if you go to Slovenia, their beers always have that little bit of oiliness to them. And having tried some Slovenian wine, I think it's just something that comes across. I've always found Slovenian beers have that lovely little bit of oiliness to them. So that is worth uh, bearing in mind. So yeah, the, the Polish beers I always remember were very clean and slightly oily and I, I get a little bit of that in this one uh, but they did have a wee bit of crispness to them as well so this is this is an interesting one we need to think about that but yeah as I say bread crust fluffy white bread in there from the barley malt you can feel the wheat just thickening it out a little bit on that middle third of the palate too then on top of that you do have quite a nice thick and kind of creamy um oaty character there but if you go toward the back if you go towards the back of that uh, middle third of your palate, I do get a wee bit of crispness there. So I wonder if that could be a little bit of like Pilsner or Lager malt or something in this. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a little bit of that. But if we focus on the OT part of the beer, you can feel there's a nice circle in the middle third of your palate there. So you get that nice little circle there and you can feel some Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy sort of stuff coming out of this one. So yeah, it's got, yeah, it definitely has a little bit of that kind of, yeah, as we say, Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy sort of thing to it. And you can feel that right in the, the kind of middle of your palate. So that's pretty good. That is pretty nice. Um, as I say, at the back of that middle third of your palate, there's a wee bit of, um, there's just a wee bit of a kind of lager malty Christmas there. I do wonder if you go, there's maybe a bit of golden promise in this. It feels a little bit familiar, but I'm sure in Poland, I think they've got the, a lot of their own maltery. So I wouldn't be surprised if some, of, if some of the malts in this beer are Polish malts that I haven't encountered before. That wouldn't surprise me. But yeah, as I say, in the middle of your palate, you've got a wee bit of that oily Werther's original butter candy sort of thing. And then as you move out towards the extremities of that middle third of your palate, it's certainly a little bit more like McVitie's digestive biscuit that you're getting out of this. So yeah, that's interesting. But yeah, on the um the back third of your palate, I think we've covered everything we need to say about the middle third of your palate. So border region between middle third and back third of your palate, you get a little bit of a kind of bready build up in there, which I do like. So yeah, a nice little bit of a kind of bready bread crusty build up there base of the back third of your palate you get a little bit more of a kind of stronger grainy bread crusty thing on top of that you can feel um the white bready layer and again that's a bit thick and then on top of that you get the wheaty bitiness out of the beer so i really do like how that goes together in uh, in this particular beer that is very very nice so yeah nice little bit of wheat of the wheaty bitiness coming out of this beer for sure Um, and on top of the wheaty bitiness you can feel a bit of the yeastiness in this beer but the wheat I actually find the wheaty bitiness that you get out of this is pretty strong and that covers up quite a little bit of the kind of yeasty flavours that you might normally get out of this but on top of that you certainly do get a little bit of um, kind of there is a wee touch of a farmhousey woody crackery sort of thing there and so you do get a wee bit of yeastiness on top of that back third of your palate but you can feel you can feel on the back third of your palate the, the flavour is a little bit taller so as you come further forward as you come further forward on that back third of your palate you can feel as you move further forward the flavour condenses down and squashes together a wee bit more the um the further forward into that middle third of the palate that you go so um yeah I like how that goes together in this beer as well but yeah um, that is very nice. Uh, on top of the, on top of that, I don't think there's anything else we need to say about the malty side of things. It's got a nice malt base to it. This so yeah, thumbs up to uh, definitely thumbs up to Brother Pinta for this one. Let's focus on the hoppy side of things. So back corner of the palate, 
a little bit of earthiness there for sure, but then as you move further forward, you quite quickly get um, a good bit of a floral aromatic sort of thing. And I think that's coming from the Nelson Sauvine. Nelson Sauvine at 16% alpha acid, it is of course, it is very, if you use it as an early edition hop, it's going to give you quite a bit of that, but Nelson Sauvine can surprise you in the level of floral aromatistic that it has. So I actually find as you come further forward on the sides of the palette there, you get quite a little bit of floral arom aromatic spice out of this one. I'm pretty sure that's down to the Nelson Sauvine a bit more than the Motueka. But round the front curve of the palette, you get a little bit of a lighter grassiness coming out of the beer. Uh, and it has a wee touch of zestiness to it as well, which I definitely appreciate. So yeah, I like the grassy zestiness there. But let's focus on the front third of your palette. So, um, on the front third of the palette then, you can feel... It's where you get the fruitiness, of course. So border region between front third and middle third of your palate. So a wee bit of bready build up there again. Then the base of that, the base of that um, front third of your palate, it has a nice kind of smooth oaty character to it. And it's got a wee bit of creaminess to it, but you get a wee bit of the dryness from the oat as well. But then on top of that, you get that nice oily bubble where those fruity, juicy esters roll their way out of the beer. Um, and for me, this is kind of interesting. Um, So for me, it actually has a wee bit of, when you take it in, the fruity side thing does have a wee bit of sharpness to it, and it is almost a little bit like kiwi, so I can see that. But when you go to the back of that front third of your palette, for me, it's got a, it's definitely a sort of dry, white, grapey kind of thing that you get out of this, and as you move further forward, it becomes a little bit more oily. So, yeah, dry, white, green, grapey notes on the back of that front third of your palette, then as you move into the front half of the front third of your palette, it becomes a little bit more oily. You can feel the lime from the Motueka underneath and then the Nelson Sauvignon kind of sitting on top. And um, They were saying on the can here, what was it? Peach and kiwi. I suppose the sharpness in the beginning could be peach, but I, I think it is a bit more kiwi. I'm not sure I agree with them on the peach, the kiwi potentially, but to me, the fruity side of this beer is it's like a dry white green grape and a bit of lime underneath, but Potentially a little bit of a sharper kiwi in there as well. But this one shows off the two hops really nicely. It's an interesting idea because normally you have a hop that's a bit more tropical and one that's a little bit more kind of citrusy, you know, like amarillo, orange, citra, um, kind of mango, if you like. So you usually have some kind of contrast here. But these two hops, the lime of the Motueka and the sort of white green grape gooseberry of the, um, the Nelson Sovin really are quite similar and it works. And this beer, it's interesting how it has that, it really has quite a nice juiciness to it on the fruity side of things too. So it gets a thumbs up from me. Lovely New England IPA this. And, you know, as I said, not surprised with the my previous experience, not surprised about this one based on my previous experiences with Polish craft beer. But uh, yeah, let's uh, round off the review then with the mouthfeel. I don't think we need to say anything else about the flavour of this beer. So yeah, um, mouthfeel this one, very, very light and very uh, drinkable beer actually, very clean mouthfeel. You have to remember that that region in the south of Poland, it's very mountainous, of course, so they're going to have very good quality water there. And it, it feel, I think that's probably what's going on in this beer. It feels just really right, light and very clean. It's actually, it's it's kind of towards the bottom end of, of mid-bodied actually it's a very light mouthfeel that you get in this it's very smooth though it's got a slickness to it um but yeah very clean beer overall actually i would say uh, in terms of hoppy bitterness um there's not a lot to this one i think this is a fairly standard sort of 30 ibu beer this one and um, but the malt base as we said very very smooth uh, it gets a bit thicker the further you go into it and it's got a wee bit of creaminess and you get a wee touch of sweetness to it as well. A lovely juicy fruity character but um, overall this is a very, very nice uh, New England double IPA. This one, the fruitiness in this has a wee bit of sharpness to it at the beginning but it rolls out and just becomes a little bit more dry and oily and stuff the further into it that you go. But it's a lovely, lovely um, New England IPA this one and it's a massive thumbs up from me. So um, yeah, I really like how this goes together, so a big thumbs up to uh, to Brother Pinta for this. And uh, yeah, I need to, if when I make it back out to New Zealand, because I will go to New Zealand again, I need to check out um, Hop Revolution. It'd be very, very good to um, to go and visit them. 
But yeah, let's leave it at that for this one then. So this was the uh, the hazy discovery Nelson uh, from Brover Pinta in Rübsch in Juviets in Schlask in the very south of Poland in collaboration with uh, Hot Revolution from Nelson in New Zealand. A lovely New England IPA and a nice kind of reintroduction, if you like, to Polish craft beer. My first ever Polish New England IPA. But once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Check out my social media, check out their social media, and do let me know some other Polish breweries that I should check out. Until the next time, Slange now. See you guys soon. Slange skull, cheers, and Nostrovia.